Chicago pastry scene is really alive, it's really vivid, but I think that maybe we're still a little bit under the radar. Chicago pastry competition, and I'm the only pastry chef from Chicago. No pressure, you know, and it's my first competition as well. There's an opportunity to involve some of my staff in a trip. There's an opportunity to network and meet some more people. There was a PR opportunity. I mean, there's all sorts of opportunity. This is my first time in Chicago, but being in the industry, you always hear New York, Chicago. Chicago, for sure, is one of the cities that really has a lot of talent. Food writers, when they travel here, they kind of confirm that by the level of interest. Our scene is much younger, and I think it's much more interesting. First up, the Gelato Mystery Challenge. You know, what was the overall impression? And then we can kind of go chef by chef and see how they interpreted it. Something that we strived for the entire portion of the competition was we wanted that texture of gelato. We wanted that dense, rich gelato. Who do you think had the best gelato challenge plate? Well, they all came out of the box with a pretty strong start. Melissa's was very beautifully done. The technique was very nice. And she does seem to be the only person who practiced much of anything with her mold. She definitely came in with a different technique that she could only have achieved through practice and repetition. For me, it was Chris Ford. It was just executed very cleanly. The flavors were bright and acidic. What about Phil's gelato? I like the corn dessert. I, I mean, we, we talked about how it was enjoyable. I felt like I wanted to eat every component and try everything. I think for Thomas, being a younger competitor, I think that was really responsible for some of the delay. You know, he did pull it out and it looked good. Some people had some problems with the execution of their signature dish. Thomas, uh, again, he did have a lot of elements. Uh, what did you think of his overall dish? I think he was incredibly ambitious with what he tried to pull together. He did not play it safe on a single one of those components. I think an admirable performance. He's someone you'll see in the future as a competitor. What about Philip's signature dish? He was one of the only competitors that presented himself to us with a sense of self and a dialogue rather than just sort of describing components on a plate. There were components that were really good. Probably the Tomka oil that he turned into a powder. That had, I think that had the most flavor impact on that dish. I think there's something to be said about offering us something new and fresh and a fine line of being refined technique-wise. I think Chris was definitely refined in the technique, the custard, the fluid gel, the crispy chocolate. But Melissa had refinement as well, and in some ways her lines were a little bit cleaner than anyone's. I think they all kind of had the common denominator. I wanted something that kind of opened my eyes. Well, that's one of the chief functions of pastry chefs is to make a dish that's memorable and, and bring diners back. The, the last impression that someone has of this great meal they had. The overall sense of urgency and, and the drive they had this year was really nice and noticeable. It was just great to see people with passion and energy in there, and you can sense that. And they looked like they were enjoying themselves. Yeah, they had a good time. Talking with each other and still being able to keep focused. Above all, you know, we're trying to create some community and we all do the same work and um, it's really not very cutthroat. It's uh, a competition against ourselves ultimately. So uh, we saw a lot of that today, people trying to push themselves a bit. Yeah, I thought it was a very successful day. My name is Jason Pra. I'm the uh, sommelier and general manager of Acadia. We're located at 1639 South Wabash. We kind of want to have this sort of uh, mystery when you're walking in, kind of with the frosted glass here when you're standing in the foyer. And then I can take you inside talking about that kind of mystery a little bit, this little peekaboo window, uh, which is for the wine room. What I've done with Acadia and the concept here is to do contemporary American food with an homage to what I consider my second home, Maine. Acadia comes from the Greek word Arcadia, which means idyllic place. So there's kind of this duality in that chef's idyllic place is not only out in Maine at this place by the beach, but also in his kitchen. There's great opportunity here in Chicago for not only myself, but for a lot of these young up and coming chefs and pastry chefs. So we have a dual line. This is basically our hot side over here. We have three French eyes, which are really, really nice. And then you have our uh, cold side over here. When I saw the kitchen for the first time, I thought, wow, you know, that's this is probably the biggest kitchen I've ever seen. It's a kitchen most chefs can only dream of. It caught my eye with this competition when I first started talking with Jimmy is that the four finalists are restaurant pastry chefs. So it's really around the art of the plate of dessert. It's really something that um, is accessible and applicable to diners because that's what they would be eating when they, you know, would come to Acadia to eat dinner.
without great ingredients, without great equipment, it's really hard to entice the best chefs to come and, and perform and give us their best. And we have uh, the good fortune of having great sponsors. We have Steelite North America. We have Pre-Gel. We have Indo Food out of Atlanta that supplies us with, of course, Chocovic Chocolate. Taylor ABS, who provided the gelato machine from Frigomat. We have Cap Fruit Puree. We have Waring Commercial. I can't even imagine anyone using any other vanilla product, so thank you very much to Nielsen Massey Vanilla. Quick mention to our host partner, the Chicago School of Mold Making, who have this beautiful facility they built, so thank you to the Chicago School of Mold Making. This competition really means a lot to us at Steelite. Without these chefs and these competitors, the talent and creativity that we saw, without that, our plates would just be plates. So without further ado, I'd like to present the Sportsmanship Award to uh, Thomas Raquel. Pre-Gel America was honored to be part of this competition. So please welcome our third place contestant, Melissa. The winner of the Chicago Restaurant Pastry Competition is Chef Christopher Ford. And please congratulate the second place winner of the competition, Mr. Philip Spears. Two amazing competitors. I think from day one we anticipated that this would be quite a battle. Four amazing competitors in all. I've never been more proud of the products that I've made. I'm super happy and proud of what I did. Everybody that was working today and yesterday, they were to showcase us. They weren't looking for our flaws, they weren't looking for us to trip, they weren't looking for us to have rivalry. So yeah, it's incredibly professional. I can promise you, we're never gonna be the same year to year. The trends are the same in pastry, and the goal of this competition is to push the industry forward to expose the very best pastry chefs working in the restaurants today. And there are many, many restaurants in the United States, and if we open it up to the world, there are many, many people who would travel here. I don't think there's anything like it as, as small and intimate and, and professionally done in the United States.